Hello everyone, it is LB3 Point Man, and I am back again with another draft profile video. Once again, these are made with the support of SB Nation and Cincy Jungle, so a big thanks to them. This is my sixth draft profile, so if this is the first one you're watching, be sure to check out the first five on my channel. Now let's take a look at a player with concerning injury history, that despite that is one of the most intriguing running backs in the draft class. That player is Oklahoma running back Rodney Anderson. Anderson was in the running to be RB1 in the 2019 draft class. However, he suffered a torn ACL week 2 of the 2018 season, and that, combined with his other career injuries, add up to a lot of concerns about his ability to stay healthy in the NFL. If he can stay healthy though, maybe it'll show exactly why he was so highly ranked to begin with. Which of course is part of what we will try to figure out and explain in this video. Now to get started, let's take a look at his athletic profile. Um, Rodney Anderson doesn't have an athletic profile. Like I said, he tours ACL the second week of the 2018 season, and although he is on his way to recovery and should be able to play week one, he was only able to do drills, so we won't get a full athletic profile for him. Looking at the information we do have in front of us, we can see that he's a bigger back and pretty strong looking at his bench numbers. He's also an older back and nearly 23 years old. We have his college dominator rating, which is solid, but not great. His college yards per carry is elite, as so he's very efficient with his touches in college. His target share wasn't very high, which makes sense in the talent-rich Oklahoma offense. I'd like to say that I believe if he had been able to test, that his athleticism would have been okay, good. I think his numbers would have ended up around where Josh Jacobs landed, and I think that would have been around right, but Anderson might have been slightly better. But of course, there's no way to know that for sure now. Now moving on to the tape study for Anderson, we will start off by looking at one of his strengths in his receiving ability and his danger in the open field. Anderson is a very good receiver that will be able to instantly contribute on third down for an NFL team. He has very good hands and is a natural route runner. I decided to combine his receiving ability with his open field ability as a strength because, well, it just felt appropriate to me. He is dangerous in his open field with his ability to shake off tacklers and make players miss. We'll look more at that later though. In this first play, we see him actually line up out wide. Then he runs down the field, and on a back shoulder throw, he's able to adjust to the ball in midair, snag it with his hands, and come down with it. In the second play, we see the wiggle in the open field, able to change directions quickly to avoid tackles, extending the play and getting a big gain. Now we move on to a weakness of his, and his technique is a run blocker. And he needs to work on said technique. His strength is for real, and he shows some flashes of, as a blocker, but sometimes he just misses times or fails to engage. Working on his technique as a blocker could be key as a three down back. On this play that we're looking at, he fails to block the linebacker, and the linebacker ends up blowing up the play, helping get the sack. Next we're looking at a strength that is one of the reasons for his ability in the open field, and it's his ability to quickly stop and change direction, and his ability to vary speed to make defenders miss. Now it is a little bit incorrect to say stop and change direction, as the real strength is his ability to change directions without slowing down much at all. He also knows how to slow down and vary his speed to make defenders miss the angle on the run plays. Looking at this play, we can see that he's able to step to the right and quickly get back to the left to make the defender, in this case, look silly, and he's able to run it in for the touchdown because of this. Next is a weakness that I don't have a play for, and it is his injury history. I already started talking about his injury history before, but he was in college for four years, but he only played in more than two games in one of them. Especially his latest injury is concerning in the ACL tear, as ACL tears do increase odds of future ACL injuries. He will fall in the draft, and that is largely because of said injury history. Next, I would like to talk about another strength, arguably his biggest strength in his contact balance and lower body strength. He is exceptionally strong as a runner, which makes sense as he is a power back. He is able to just run through arm tackles with very little resistance, and he makes any defenders look silly when trying to bring him down half-heartedly. His power combined with his movement abilities is a rare combination that doesn't come along super often. He will do most of his damage with his power, but he can make opponents miss with his movement skills as well. If we look at this first play, he's contacted in the backfield, but he's able to break the tackle and turn what would have been a negative play into a touchdown. On the second play, he catches the pass out of the backfield, and he is hit a couple times, but the tackle attempt simply bounces off, and he is able to run it in for the touchdown. Now moving on to another weakness, and this can't necessarily be blamed on him, but it's his college offensive line and his college offensive coordinator. Specifically, how good both of them were. A lot of a running back's success can be boiled down to the situation that the running back finds himself in, and Anderson's college situation was just about ideal. So there have to be some questions if his efficiency can continue into the pros, and or if he was just buoyed by the scheme. 
I picked a quick play to take a look at where the Oklahoma offensive line just opened a gaping hole and Anderson is able to just easily run through. Anyone could run through in this play. The final strength I want to take a look at is his long speed. He has better long speed than most players at his size and he's able to get through the hole and break off big runs. He isn't the fastest player and he will probably be chased down sometimes in the NFL. But based off the tape, he seems to have the long speed to succeed in the NFL. Took a look at this play against Georgia, he just runs cleanly through the outside, and he is just gone, and the cornerbacks and safeties are unable to chase him down on the way to the end zone. Now it's time to talk about my overall thoughts. The main question with Rodney Anderson is health. Of course you have to question if he will be able to succeed on talent as well. He isn't particularly explosive, he has very short arms, shorter than most running backs that succeed. There are concerns about Anderson beyond health. But the main concern has to be his health. He's a very talented back, and I think that he could succeed in the NFL if he can stay healthy. Now, taking into account his injury history, I personally would still consider him around the three if I was a running back needing team. But it seems more likely that he goes on day three, possibly in rounds four or five. But even a running back two role where he doesn't have to be the main guy would be ideal, as it may help him stay healthy. My comparison for Anderson is a bit older of a player than I normally go with for my comps. It is former Chiefs running back Larry Johnson. Johnson was a bigger back who also had some receiving chops. He was tough to bring down, but he also had a little bit of wiggle for his size. Now, to wrap up, I would like to say thank you for everyone who watched. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and put in the comments what other plays you'd like me to do and if there's any interest in continued videos after the draft. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed yourself and learned something new. Thank you.